Hey everyone, it's Travis speaking. If you followed the last couple videos that we put out, you'll notice that we created some conceptual mass families and we talked about how to create those in the family editor with a conceptual mass template. Today I want to get into in place conceptual massing. And uh, so if we get back into this file conceptual massing RDT and we open it up and we say, oh Lord, where are the masses? There's a couple, a couple things we want to talk about first about the behavior of these things. If I type VV for my visibility graphics and I go down to that category mass, we see that it's not checked. So if I click on that and hit OK, now I can see in level one where those masses are. I'm going to do most of this in 3D. So when I come over here again, you can see that nothing's visible. So another way of controlling this is to go to the massing in site tab and going over to your show mass by view settings. So right now the view settings don't have mass category enabled. So if I click on this and say show mass form and floors, then we see our masses show up. So this is what we left off with last time. So this one we created uh, a schematic office material. If I want to create another material for this one, I'll simply select it and we'll go into this uh, by category option. So there's a few things I want to talk about when it comes to materials. Okay, if I scroll down here and I find that schematic material, okay, you can see I've only got the one in here, but I want to create another one for my second mass that's called warehouse. So I'm just going to click on this guy, or right click, sorry, and duplicate that asset. And you can see it looks just like the other one, the original. So I'm going to rename it quick to schematic warehouse. Oh, got the caps lock on. How often do we do that, eh? Anyway, okay, so now I've got schematic warehouse in here and you can see it's got the sa exact same color. So if we slip over here to the appearance tab, you'll notice that this one says one generic 10. And then if I go back to schematic office, it says one generic 10. So anything I do to this material asset is going to change in both of them and that's not what I want. So to make that change, I'm gonna go over here. It looks like your copy to clipboard icon. And when I click on that, it changes my number now to zero generic 11. So now I can go into the color of this. I'm gonna choose a, a nice light blue. Actually, I'm gonna choose like a, a red because the blue is my selection color. So if I choose red and then, actually that still looks orange. Let's go with like a green. Okay, so now you can see that these are changing independent to one another. And when I go back to graphics though, I don't want this to show up orange, so I'm gonna say use render appearance, and then it changes my RGB value to that which is in my render appearance. Okay, so now I'm ready to go. If I say okay to that, now I've got this warehouse form here, it's set to green. And I just wanna, uh, before we do anything else, I wanna talk a little bit about some of these behaviors on, on mass materials. Okay, so these ones are opaque. You can't see through them. Before I changed that, the by category was a, a transparent or translucent material. So if we just, I'm just gonna place another mass in here and we'll put it over there. And you can see, I can see the hidden lines through this. Okay, if we were to create a conceptual mass in the project and we want it to actually be a material concrete, we can actually do that. If I come in here and I'm gonna say concrete, hopefully, the, okay, so I'll use this cast in place gray one Okay, what that does is that takes a whole mass and it makes it concrete. Now it's a solid chunk of concrete. So that's a lot of concrete. Um, obviously, we're not gonna really need that. I just wanted to show you how those materials behave um, because most of the time when we're doing conceptual mass, we don't need a material. All we really need is the form so that we can put a wall to its face or a roof on it.